Hi everyone, we're really happy to be here today to present our three astro dramas on Skip Steps. Our cast is Carolyn, Dawn, Lauren, Mariam, Robin, Wanda and myself. We'll begin with a recap on what Skip Steps are and how to understand them to be followed by our three astro dramas. Skip Steps, Planets Square the Nodes. Check out these earlier presentations on EA Zoom Meetings YouTube channel, Resolution of Skip Steps, Personal Reflection on Soul Journey by Simon Vorster, Skip Steps, Deep Lessons of Soul by Gray Crawford and Diana Elizabeth, Skip Steps Introduction by Diana Elizabeth. A planet or planet squaring the nodes by a maximum orb of 10 degrees, applying or separating, denotes skip steps. The tighter the orb, the greater the urgency and intensity to resolve the skip step issues. Skip steps mean that the soul has been flip-flopping back and forth between the nodes, not fully developing either of them, thus stagnating and unable to achieve the soul's deepest evolutionary intentions as described by Pluto and its polarity point. Two planets square the nodes are both skip steps in their own right. Multiple planets square the nodes is a deep, unresolved, traumatic and severe pattern that needs to be unraveled and understood. Causes of skip steps, trauma, guilt, self-judgment, denial, avoidance, suppression of natural laws, natural guilt, man-made guilt, Nodal issues not understood, resolved or integrated. Manifestation of skip steps. Deep tension and imbalance within the soul. Stagnation, conflict, inconsistency, frustration. Fluctuation back and forth between the nodes and neither of them being fully developed. Making the same old choices over and over again. Wasting and scattering of energy. Conflict expressed in relationships with others. Using the skip step planet negatively. Inability to achieve the soul's evolutionary intentions via the North Node and Pluto polarity point. The T-square, a planet T-squaring the nodes of the moon, a feeling of being boxed in from two sides. The skip step planet is often the most dynamic planet in the chart. It is a very dynamic principle that the individual normally has trouble integrating into the awareness process of the nodes. This difficulty then provokes acutely felt inattention and imbalance, which is eventually expressed through relationships with other people. The skip step planet must be learned to be used positively rather than just being triggered by the tension and conflict of the nodes. The resolution to the skipping pattern is consistent focus on the resolution node, making it the bottom line for the entire life. The Pluto paradigm. First, an overall understanding of the entire birth chart must be understood. This provides the core individual context to rightly understand why the skip steps have manifested in relation to the ongoing evolutionary needs of the soul. Pluto is the root of a tree from which is birthed all other planets, nodes, aspects and skip steps in the chart. If we understand the Pluto root as the origin, then we can understand how and why the trunk, branches and leaves grow out of that. All symbols in the chart are equal. They all work together as a whole. My Pluto paradigm. We begin with the evolutionary condition, consensus, individuated or spiritual. Pluto is the soul's prior evolutionary intentions. The South Node and ruler is the mode of operation and facilitator for the soul's prior evolutionary intentions. The North Node and Ruler is the mode of operation and facilitator for the soul's current evolutionary intentions, and the Pluto polarity point is the current evolutionary intentions. My core skip step issue. What is the core issue of your skip steps by planet, sign, and house? Why has your soul chosen these skip steps? What is the core issue of your south node by sign and house? Why has your soul chosen that? What is the core issue of your North Node by Simon House? Why has your soul chosen that? 
A planet squaring the nodes of the moon by a maximum orb of 10 degrees applying or separating denotes skip steps. Applying aspect. When the skip step planet is moving toward the exact nodal degree but has not reached it, the aspect is applying. The tighter the orb, the greater the intensity and urgency to resolve the skip steps. The applying aspect is more active, volatile and erratic in expression. It is moving toward resolution or perfection. Separating aspect. When the skip step planet has already made the exact aspect to the nodes and is moving away, the aspect is separating. The further it is from the degree of the nodes, the more the lessons have been resolved. The separating aspect is more calm and stable. The drive towards resolution has already taken place. No matter what the orb, you have the natural law of free will, free choice to resolve the skips at any time. The resolution will be reflected in the current lifetime and also in the next. How to determine the resolution node? Stand on the planet and face the center of the wheel. Look to your left, that is the resolution node. The resolution node, three reactions to evolutionary growth, to totally resist, to cooperate in some ways or totally go for it. Consistent focus on the resolution node and its ruler leads to recovering what was skipped, missed or misunderstood. The challenge is to adjust one's psychological attitude to finish what was not finished before. The whole skip step signature needs to be recovered. The resolution node is the key knot that when untied allows all the other knots to be more easily released. Consistent focus on the resolution node enables the integration of new understandings, changes to our perceptions and changes to our habitual emotional patterns to new and improved ones. The other node continues to evolve, that it evolves through the resolution node as the bottom line. The resolution node becomes the bottom line for the entire life and makes evolution possible via Pluto's polarity point and the north node. Questions to ask yourself. Why have your skip steps manifested in relation to your soul's evolutionary intentions? What choices did your soul make in the past that directly led to the creation of your skip steps? What difficulties, issues, troubles, worries or complications have you experienced in relation to this signature? How do you consistently, consistently experience success and positive results when you focus on your resolution node? What real life experiences prove that you are resolving your skip steps? What real life experiences show that you are still blocked and unresolved in this area? What are the key decisions and choices to focus on that will help you consistently resolve your skip steps issues? Some planetary medicines to help resolve the skip steps. So the Sun Planetary Medicine, work on the ego, psychodrama or astral drama, role playing to increase flexibility, any form of creative expression, art, dancing, poetry or acting, yoga to open the heart area, identification of narcissism, increasing relationality, relationality with others, Expressing emotions to those you care about. Creating your own destiny. Creating a special purpose out of the strength of your will. Relating to the childlike qualities in others. Moon planetary medicine. Spending time out in nature. Breathing exercises emotional expression, working with family of origin, volunteer or altruistic work, caring for others, spending time nourishing and loving oneself, ego state work to address the child, talking to trusted friends about your feelings. Mercury planetary medicine for Gemini, Analysis of mental processes, opinions, and beliefs. 
symbolism, meditation, journaling, slowing down, and developing tact. For Virgo, analysis of mental processes, learning how to let go, releasing expectations, calming the mind, meditation, exercise, eating healthy foods, and acting on feelings of compassion. Venus Planetary Medicine. For Taurus, taking a practical approach to life, harmonizing the throat area, singing, changing external environment, body work, aromatherapy, increasing pleasure, and living by your own values. For Libra, sex therapies, couples counseling, addressing relationship problems, finding compromise, finding your own independence and strength, increasing the awareness of others' needs. Mars Planetary Medicine, movement or action therapies, tactile learning through physical activities rather than listening to a lecture or watching demonstrations, anger management, development of healthy assertiveness versus passive aggressive traits, slowing down, paying attention to others around you, getting, around, getting grounded, practicing self-discipline, avoiding conflicts, and trusting negative emotions. Jupiter Planetary Medicine. Work on philosophical identifications, addressing over-expansion, travel, learning something new to open and expand the mind, study of astrology, science, or ecology, exercise, higher education, addressing hypomania, pervasive, elevated euphoric moods, trusting your intuition, speaking from higher consciousness. Saturn planetary medicine, adjustments of posture, osteopathy, career counseling, age or life stage work, grief counseling, addressing depression, expression of the child, making more time for play, slowing down, meditation, yoga, or journaling. Uranus planetary medicine, slowing down, rebalancing the nervous system, chakra balancing, addressing radicality, activism, addressing collective factors, how your ideas or creations can benefit mankind, surrounding yourself with inspirational friends of like mind, humanitarianism, recognizing how others are special. Neptune planetary medicine, dream work, imagery, meditation, getting in touch with your spiritual self or your true essence, getting creative, channeling energy into something productive, getting grounded, grounding altered states, spiritual guidance, and surrendering anxiety to a higher power. Pluto planetary medicine, self-analysis, putting intensity to good use, embracing change, dealing with the shadow, meditation, tantra, spending time near water, releasing stagnation and low energy, awareness of others' psychology. Chiron planetary medicine, Empathy with hurt places, identification of areas of disability in self, addressing martyrdom, homeopathy, karmic recall and replay, attention to physical handicaps, concentrated attention on disabilities or traumas. 
Thanks, Mariam. Skip steps play out interpersonally. The skip step planet, both nodes and their rulers are all major players in the story. The T-square sets up wrestling matches with all of these intrapsychic forces colliding. The stressful dynamics are played out through relationships with others. Example, I am Pluto Leo 10th. A partner comes along and plays North Node Scorpio first, which conflicts with my social identity. Or I am North Node Scorpio and spontaneously follow a new attraction, which leads to chaotic disempowerment via social blocking or unequal relationships with others. Or I'm identified with South Node Taurus 7th. I desire stability and commitment. Someone comes along and plays Scorpio. I feel manipulated and disempowered. A lot of different enactments can take place. And here are just a few character traits of the signs. Aries, energetic, forceful, me, me, me. Taurus, stubborn, brooding, fixed. Gemini, restless, nervous, talkative. Cancer, tenacious, sensitive, moody. Leo, arrogant, self-interested, me, me, me. Virgo, critical, guilty, serving. Libra, too nice, unequal, unbalanced. Scorpio, tyrannical, secretive, manipulative. Sagittarius, restless, adventurous, takes risks. Capricorn, deliberate, controlling, seeks order. Aquarius, nervous, irreverent, rebellious. And Pisces, sensitive, chameleon, deceptive. Welcome to Astro Drama. Playing the roles of the astrological archetypes in virtual theatrical interchanges, covering special conditions such as skip steps and other dynamic configurations in the chart. Astrodrama, Skip Steps, Three Plays, Butter in the Mouth, A True Story by Linda, Getting It Right This Time, A Spontaneous Off-The-Cuff Play by Robin, and Finding Time, A Pre-Written Script by Carolyn. Enjoy. Butter in My Mouth, A True Story by Linda, The Cast, Skip Step Planet Pluto, played by Linda. South Node Taurus, Wendy, played by Dawn. North Node Scorpio, Cat, played by Wanda. Trans Channel, Pamela, played by Marion. And the narrator is Carolyn. The setting, in front of the computer, Linda's home. Overview. Who are the primary characters populating this scene? and what makes them unique. Wendy is South Node Taurus, played by Dawn, the voice of reason, wisdom, balance, light and wholesomeness. She offers tried and true methods of healing for the body. Cat is North Node Scorpio, played by Wanda, sharing deep and penetrating metaphysical insights. What do these characters, you, want? Wendy wants to give advice for healing the body. Cat wants to share new and exciting news and synchronicities that offer new directions of interest for the soul. What are the primary obstacles or challenges? Unconsciousness, Pluto, to wake up to the shock of patriarchal reality and ultimately to heal the body, mind and soul. Butter in my mouth. Linda is sitting at her computer talking to Wendy via Facebook chat. Oh my God, I have an awful toothache. Oh no, tell me about it. I got a filling the other day. I may need a root canal. Drat! The nerve is inflamed and it's so painful. Homeopathic hypericum addresses nerve pain. Do you have any? I have some hypericum cream. Would that work? Yes, cream will work. Gently rub it into the skin around the area of your tooth. Linda quickly runs to the bedroom, grabs the cream, and applies it. Oh my God, I can't believe it. 
The very instant I added the cream, the pain just dissolved. Oh my gosh, it's a miracle. Yes, it works on nerve pain. Wendy, you're amazing. Five minutes later. Oh no, the pain is coming back. Mm, that's because hypericum is better taken internally. A tincture or pellets taken internally would be better, but just keep applying the cream. Later in the kitchen, Linda is looking for a snack to eat for breakfast. She grabs half an avocado and three puffed rice biscuits. And then suddenly she has this thought. Butter. Oh, yes. I want some butter on these biscuits. Mm, I just love butter. So she grabs the butter from the fridge, lathers it over the three biscuits, then adds the crushed avocado. She bites into it. Mmm, this is delicious. I'm so craving butter right now. While eating the delicious snack, Linda walks over to the computer and opens an email by Kat titled, Synchronicity. Oh wow, I am watching a video that just covered the problem with your tooth. Check out this video at the 44 minute mark. Linda follows the instructions. At the 44 minute mark, here is what trans channel Pamela is saying. Okay, let's take another live question. I would like to know if we are able to heal or regrow teeth by thought, or is there any other method which you recommend? Well, eat. Pamela starts to channel Edgar Casey. That's unusual. He's showing me butter and grass. This is grass fed butter. Okay. That's interesting because a close friend of mine went through that recently. She actually did heal a really horrible cavity and then she prevented herself for the need of a root canal because of the grass fed butter. So that's interesting. It's a way of oil pulling. Edgar said in his time they used buttermilk, but now it's grass-fed butter. He said, from the spiritual perspective, consider your words. Words can be toxic, bitter, and vitriolic in nature. Consider your words. Are they poisonous to your mouth? He makes so much sense. It's so simple, yet so profound. Linda writes to Kat. Wow, I was just in the kitchen trying to find a snack to eat for breakfast. Half an avocado and puffed rice cracker. And then I thought, oh yes, I want butter on that. I'm so craving butter right now. While enjoying this snack and especially the taste of the butter, I walked over to the computer, read your email, Open the link as you instructed at 44 minutes and oh my god it was all about butter <laughs> a real synchronicity in fact a double synchronicity yours and mine perhaps we were sisters in a past life i need to take care of the words coming out of my mouth it just hit me like a ton of bricks that is very good advice for my skip steps i love pamela she's amazing Wow, talk about synchronicity. Did you happen to read about Pamela being shamed? Unbelievable. What is wrong with people lately? This is worse than calling Arias a prostitute. Oh no, Pamela doesn't deserve that, nor Arias. People couldn't understand that Arius was coming from natural law. So what if he was not wearing a shirt? We've seen him like that many times over the years. Today's drama will soon be forgotten. Of course, some other drama will surely take its place. Kat, I've received incredible insights about my skip steps. Venus in Capricorn in the third house 
is the ruler of my resolution node, the south node Taurus 7th. The resolution being butter in my mouth. And it's grass-fed butter too from a placid cow chewing grass in a field. The synchronicity which my own soul created led to this direct insight. Not only does the resolution heal my body, my teeth, but also eliminates the poison coming out of my mouth. Overall, this is a huge lesson for my Pluto skip step, ruled by the sun in the third house. Unfortunately, it had been too, too late for Edgar Cayce's butter remedy. And over the next three weeks, Linda had to undergo the dreadful ordeal of a root canal. Sitting at her computer, she responds to a Facebook voice call from Wendy. Hey, Wendy. I'm experiencing that lightheadedness and dizziness again. Oh my God, I feel dreadful, like I'm on LSD or something. Yesterday, the dentist was putting all kinds of horrible substances in my mouth. Ugh. Mm. Try drinking ginger tea or detox tea. Although the ginger is a stimulant, it's also very grounding. Soon after the voice call, Linda made some detox tea and adds some chopped ginger. She is wondering how this incident could be relevant to her skip steps. She emails Kat with a tooth update. I've been experiencing that lightheadedness all day today. I'm thinking with that Pluto skip step, things can become very intense stress-wise. And, that, and that's my resolution node is always alerting me to take care of my body, Taurus. Sorry about that. I hope you recover soon. Make sure that you drink plenty of fluids. Hmm. I'm wondering if you are reacting to your dental procedure. Yes, I think so. Not only have I been under a lot of stress lately, but add to that the dental treatment, traveling for four hours to get there and back, eating strange food, it was the best I could find in Coffs Harbor. The collective vibe now that Jupiter is in Scorpio, which seems to be manifesting in some people as a jovial kind of nastiness and cruelty. Plus my neck is aching because of the position I had to sit in for an hour. All of that. I phoned my boyfriend to let him know about the intense dizziness, just in case the worst happens. Linda was not going to take any chances. After all, Pluto can correlate to death. Ah, just like me, preparing for the just in case. Drinking lemon water is a good detox. Other than that, you need to rest and make sure that you are breathing correctly, not shallow. Thanks, Kat. Oh, interesting what he's breathing. I've been having difficulty breathing during the past several weeks. Anyway, enough of my whinging. Overview. What is the climax, the turning point of no return? The butter treatment does not work. It is too late. Linda has no choice but to experience once again her mistrust of dentists. And finally, what are the consequences, redemption or resolution and ending? Bringing light and consciousness to Pluto via the resolution node, the south node Taurus in the seventh house, through receiving down to earth counseling, tried and true healing remedies, and enjoying the balance and equality with trusted and positive friends, such as Wendy and Kat. Help also comes from occult sources, Edgar Casey, Pamela, and divine synchronicities. Why the plutonian mistrust of dentists? After years of botched up dental work, Capricorn wants things to be done right. What new insights have been revealed? The resolution is understanding the poison held in the words in the mouth. Why? This comes from past life Pluto mental structures, thinking patterns, beliefs, false ideas, and communication patterns. 
Pluto is ruled by Sun Capricorn in the third house, bringing consciousness to the words and waking up to the shock of a patriarchal reality. Help comes from slowing right down and enjoying the wholesomeness that a Venusian life offers. Finding Time, a spontaneous off-the-cuff play by Robin. The cast, Skip Step, Planet Pluto, by Robin. South Node Gemini, played by Dawn. North Node Sagittarius, played by Lauren. Ruler of South Node, Mercury, Libra 9th, played by Mariam. Pluto Polarity Point, played by Linda. The setting, at home. Finding time. Overview. What do these characters want? Skipped Step Pluto wants to focus on creative self-expression and penetrating the depth of life's mysteries. These desires want to be united with another to work together toward the goals. South Node Gemini wants to explore, investigate, and collect ideas and information to share with others. North Node Sag wants to be free to explore and experience different perspectives of life and then share and teach. Mercury in Libra in the ninth wants to find balance and value in all ideas. Pluto's polarity point just wants security. I am torn apart with family obligations and so I have to deal with more stuff. Distractions, distractions, distractions. You've dealt with so much family crisis over the past year. Yes, I was in a constant state of worry and anxiety. Life seemed very dark. One crisis after another, like there would be no end to the suffering. Well, I could suggest you need healing for all the anxiety and worry and the negative thinking. Maybe by making adjustments and improvements to your mental structure, that is your thoughts, the things you think of, and using your Pluto to completely metamorphose your thoughts into more positive ones. Yes, I would like to find peace and equanimity. You have such a hard time making up your mind on what to focus your attention on. I know you want to do something to bring in more financial security. And you want to be doing the things that you really want to do. But you can't decide. There are too many choices. You want to do something creative, but you can't just pick one thing. I need you to get your head in the game. To dig into all those talents and resources that you have just waiting inside of you. And pull them all out one by one because there's a million of them. And then make good use of them. Get to work. But I have all my family obligations. And then I have my interest in astrology, which takes up so much of my time. I can't not do that. I have to do that. I just want you to be free. Just flow. You have always sacrificed yourself for others. Perhaps without the necessary discernment. It is kind of like you're in a prison. So much conflict and perhaps some suppressed anger. Yes, I want to be free. I don't want to be structured. My Pluto wants to be a star and be creative. I can even write about astrology by getting in touch with what's underneath the surface. Why? Why am I not in my own power here? What is the lesson? What am I avoiding and denying? Maybe you feel guilty, like you should be doing something else, something more important. That guilt needs to be healed. Drop the guilt, just dream, float, be free, and escape it all. You could write about this guilt. Mm, but I can't write. Writing is too uncomfortable. I hate writing. Focus. Sit down and focus. Let it all just pour right out of you. There are so many words at the tips of your fingers. Just let them out. 
Let it flow. Dream, fantasize, and escape it all. <laughs> the time for escape is over. It's time to wake up. Give yourself an hour every day. It's a bit of structure here. Give yourself an hour each day where nobody will distract you. The home office where you sit, it's a traffic area. Untraffic that area. Take it to the bedroom, under the stairs, somewhere that so that everybody knows this is Robin time and make it clear that nobody's going to interfere with Robin time. You could also work outside of the house. Get out there, go into nature, write and be creative. Write a story, even if it's make-believe, that you can transform anything you want. Mm -hmm. And eliminate any distractions. Use that Pluto to eliminate anything that is getting in your way. And if you have to, get out your bow and arrow and pop them with that arrow and turn off that phone. It is time to stop being a yes girl for everyone. But I can't. I feel guilty. You've always done too much for everyone. They're all clamoring around you for more, more, more. Oh my God. At this stage, Robin feels guilty. Her south node is the resolution node. It is ruled by Mercury Libra in the ninth house. Let's go to some resolutions now. Robin needs to liberate herself. Okay, here are some resolutions. Calm down your nervous system. Work out first. Calm down and do some deep breathing and then have your creative juices flow. Here's something else that will help. In terms of your feelings of guilt, ask yourself this question. Is this guilt man-made guilt or is it natural guilt from natural law? I think it's both. Mm. We all have natural guilt because we've all done awful things in the past. This guilt never leaves the soul. It acts as a reminder not to do it again. But what about your man-made guilt? in your current life with your family. It comes from codependency, maybe. Yes, codependency. Pluto in the eighth house symbolizes the desire to penetrate to the bottom line of your relationship with your family and to understand the why of those patterns. I think to help solve your guilt, you need to be truthful and honest with your family and with yourself. Right. You have to determine what is your responsibility and what are your family's responsibilities. Try to discern the difference. Yes, I need to work on that for sure. Well, your moon in Gemini in the sixth house is scattering you to feel so much in service to everyone else. The south node being there means you're already good at it. You're already doing it. It's enough. You need to actually have some service for yourself a little bit and stop feeling so guilty about it. Certainly, it's enough already. And yes, Virgo is definitely about efficiency and determining what's important and what is not. I think a lot of your time is being taken up with unnecessary activities that aren't really your responsibility. Cut it off. That's Virgo. It's taking what is absolutely useful and eliminating the rest. I have been deeply pondering the ruler of your north node, Jupiter in Virgo. It's a skip step planet as well. You have achieved some resolutions because it is separating from the nodes. However, your Pluto skip steps are much more intense, hidden, deep and urgent because Pluto is applying to the nodes. You've had a problem with honesty, Jupiter. You need to express that honesty in a creative purpose, the sun. And you need to metamorphose the old soul desires that are causing stagnancy in your evolution, Pluto. This is the detail that you need to fill in. I was looking at that too, from the point of view of your beliefs. 
What is your belief in terms of your responsibilities or duties to others? And what is not? It sounds like you have taken on a lot of these daily tasks, fixing things for everybody, because you believe that is what you are supposed to do. Right. And it's taking up time from your creative process. Virgo loves to fix things. People really latch on to that when they, they, when they see that. They say, this person can take care of it, and then you end up taking on stuff that they should be taking on. Yes. My youngest daughter is going to be 22 this month, and I'm having to do everything for her. I was having to deal on the phone with her medical coverage. She's not taking care of anything. <sighs> so, <laughs> so I'm having to do it all. <sighs> she needs to learn to be independent and take care of herself. Instead of lying on me. That's your skipped step. That's Pluto and Leo. Leo, children. And it's doubling emphasized because it's conjunct your son in Virgo. This speaks directly to discernment around children. And my daughter has Pluto in the fifth house is Scorpio. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Pluto and Leo will have resistant children. That will teach you lessons. It can be so frustrating. And that is your Pluto skip step. And possibly you tend to think your emotions rather than feeling them. And maybe you need to structure the way you help autistic children and develop with that possibly more freedom in perhaps a consulting role. I'm definitely called to be doing healing, but I'm also called to be doing creative things. I'd love to be able to do both and find the focus in myself to develop something to bring them together. Your Pluto is ruled by the sun and the sun's in Virgo. The sun is not a skip step, but it is a warning that further skip steps may develop. The stellium is like a triple warning that you need to really listen to. And so look at the Virgo details I suggest that you create a new philosophy that will help to metamorphose the old structures and bring complete transformation. Like the caterpillar turning into a butterfly with the old shell being discarded. How do I create a new philosophy? By following your intuition in every moment, by following what you want to do for a change not what everyone else thinks you should do, not what society thinks you should do, not what your family wants you to do, not what these other voices in your own head think you should do. Let your intuition be your guide. It is the path of the feminine and it is true. Do you follow your intuition? Oh yeah, sometimes, but not always. Everything in your life has to go through that south node. It's the bottom line for this lifetime. And what that means is practicing discernment at all times, not avoiding or denying these issues by reverting to self-sacrifice and by formulating the words that you need to say to others, changing the way you think and changing the day-to-day -day routines, the way you can heal yourself and the way you can help to heal others. Robin, I really feel you've taken too much on. It's just too much. You're not here to save the world. Just say, I'm sorry, family, I can't help you right now. And that will make them go out and help themselves. You are speaking your truth to all of us here, but you need to tell them. Exactly. Exactly. Don't be ashamed to do something for you. Don't say... Who will I be if I let them flounder? Don't say that. Of course, you still love them. I guess there's some deep insecurity involved. Um, maybe it's a fear of abandonment that comes from Pluto in the eighth house. Absolutely, fear of abandonment. But it's also fear of not being loved. Leo, fear of not getting the attention that you need. 
and fear of losing your power, discernment is needed to find your true power. And you're not helping when you're enabling your children. Oh, I know. My parents were extreme enablers. But you don't help children when you do that. The ruler of that south node is Mercury in Libra. And Mercury's on the supergalactic center. It's extremes. It's extreme service, extreme codependency, extreme duties to family, and extreme untruth. It is ironic that it is also an extreme need for freedom. So how do you find the balance? It's through honesty, by knowing when to give and when not to give. You have to learn to not give sometimes. And then you swing to the other extreme where Mercury shuts up and clamps down and then you can't speak at all. You've been punishing yourself this way for a long time. Yeah, sometimes the communication flows, but other times I can't do it. The overview. What are the primary obstacles or challenges? Pluto has a hard time finding the focus to devote to the full potential and expression of his desires. Pluto blames South Node Gemini for, for this lack of focus. And South Node Gemini is too scattered and restless, always jumping from one idea to the next and overanalyzing everything. Oh, and North Node Sag is always jumping ahead without taking the time to examine all the details. Where's the balance? Mercury and Libra wants balance, but Mercury's challenge is always needing to examine everything from every perceivable angle, resulting in indecision. And finally, what are the consequences, redemption or resolution and ending? The resolution is to make it all work. How? By focusing on the positive expressions of Gemini, Sagittarius, and Virgo, to become discerning and to see reality for what it truly is, to not allow self-limiting beliefs to control me, to invest more in myself, and to practice putting more structure in my approach to the things I want to accomplish, and to follow my intuition and have faith in myself. What new insights have been revealed? I need to let go of guilt and being overly self-critical, be more giving with myself, and secure my borders. Getting It Right This Time, a pre-written script by Carolyn. Cast, Pluto Paul, played by Marion. North Node Spencer, played by John. South Node Illyria, played by Wanda. Pluto Polarity Point, Frida, Linda. Soul Vehicle, silent character. And the narrator is Lauren. The setting, the astro characters surround Soul Vehicle's bed while she sleeps. Getting it right this time. Introduction. The step involving Pluto and the nodes of fate is separating. The job may seem to be nearly complete, considering the 10 plus degrees involved. Yet natal Neptune conjunct natal Sun and other aspects suggests this to be the chart of a soul who has lost herself. All may, may not be what it seems. First, I present Pluto Paul, played by Mariam. He lives in the fourth house under the sign of Leo. Paul is appalling at times, really dreadful. But he did have a difficult childhood, or maybe no childhood at all. A story for another time. He mumbles at best and erupts at worst. He stomps his feet like a very small child because he cannot explain what he wants. He's a tad preverbal. The help he gets from Alaria is not always the best. South Node Alaria, played by Wanda. 
She inhabits the seventh house of relationships under the sign of Scorpio. Think dark, dank, with the possibility of great magic, but not yet, not in this story. Paul Pluto is her ruler, and she knows it. Considering her proximity to Mercury, we must play close attention. Alaria wants to do well for Paul, but theirs is an enabling and dysfunctional relationship based on fear. North Node Spencer, played by Don, lives in the first house in between Aries and Gemini. His ruler is Venus and Leo, fifth house. Although theatrical, Venus encourages lo his love of beauty and nature. He hasn't gone out much in the past. Still, his is the voice of hope. He would choose to live in a simple, comfortable world. But Frida, peep, 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 Pluto polarity point, has some different needs. Hilaria is a source of interference. She is seductive, messy, and conniving. Pluto polarity point Frida doesn't say anything. Lives in the 10th house under the sign of Aquarius. She is a free thinker who does have boundaries. She has energy, smarts, and the ability to carry a plan to completion with a little help from her team. There is a certain nervousness in her nature, and she looks to the others for support. The others will look to her for their shared special destiny, if they are smart. Soul's vehicle, a sleeping inert body. What do these characters want? Even though they are afraid, they want to stop living in the past and being mistrustful of adults, of life. They want to have self-trust that a comfortable, productive, interesting life is possible for them. What are the primary obstacles or challenges? The Astro characters portray the conflicting parts of the soul's vehicle. They are aware that they have been repeating painful, self-defeating patterns of behavior. They are afraid of being betrayed again by interacting with adults. Unless they overcome their paralysis, they will play the same miserable parts again and again. And now the story. Dreamtime's shadowy land. The soul sleeps blissfully. Well, not so blissfully considering the nightmares about large, wet, leering figures lounging close by. She is unaware that her life path is about to change, if she's lucky and pays attention. Three figures, arms akimbo, stand kicking toes, in the dust preparing for the most faded of counters. Without cooperation, they are doomed to repeat the life pattern of avoidance and ad nauseum. Hello, hello, I'm over here. It's safe to look at me. You've got to pay attention this time. I'm resourceful. I'm spontaneous. I support you in your search for your special destiny. And I'm rich. Okay, okay, Spencer. It's not easy to find stuck in your house. You have not wanted South Node Illyria and I think you're a big risk. Change? Pfft. Think, oh silent one. Just because your lady Venus is a show-off doesn't mean you are all present and helpful. Put cards on the table, big boy. <laughs> I like to be quiet, too. Least said. Soon as ended, my mother always said. I know I've been less than visible, Paul. Hasn't been easy to get this vehicle's attention. 
He looks doubtfully down at the sleeping form. Bit of a space cadet she is, but listen, time is of the essence. This soul's vehicle isn't getting any younger. We've got to get our act together or risk more lifetimes, lurching back and forth, never evolving. Unimpressed, alluring, Illyria and Paul, put a mutter and scuffle harumph and sigh discontentedly. God knows I haven't been very present or cooperative. I get off on being alone, but I do like to be a leader and I felt the anxiety of separation. I have felt anger at the limitations placed on me in this life, but at least I'm not like Alario over there. What do you mean? I'm the one that got us here. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <sighs> People just think of me as a nasty insect crawling around on the ground stinging. Well, I do want to fly. Don't be so hard on Paul. He's been blamed for a lot of stuff, like kidnapping Persephone and making life difficult in general. But it's just his nature. It's his job to be appalling to instigate change. Anyway, Paul loves my house. He doesn't want to leave. Besides, Change is hard here, too. I like company. So what's a woman to do? Trust doesn't come easy. I know what it's like to be killed for opening your mouth, especially when you're right. I've had things to do. Knives to take out of my back. Fishy kings to avoid. Bonfires at my feet to extinguish. Hmm. Aleria looks away dismissively and examines her fingernails, her long, sharp fingernails. Aleria, Paul, listen. That was then, this is now. Look, look, do you see, Frida? You can be in the world, but not of it. You can work with adults and not get betrayed. You can care, but you can be smart about it. We're in this together. Frida has vision. She won't let you get too close. In her airy house, she can help you with your boundaries. Number 10 Aquarius Heights is a fine address to visit. And you can always come home to me. We'll sing, we'll eat, we'll walk in the forest. Frida's Pluto polarity point smiles confidently as the three figures look hopefully, then with conviction in her direction. What is the climax, the turning point of no return? South Node Alaria has reminded the group how wounded and frightened they are. Paranoia is not an unre unreasonable feeling. North Node Spencer gives them an ultimatum. Change or be sorry. Perplexed longingly, he reg regards Pluto Polarity Point Frida. The others turn to watch her too. And finally, what are the consequences, redemption, or resolution and ending? Visionary Pluto Polarity Point Frida flashes aquarium welcoming signs. She offers them a very different and fulfilling life. If they cooperate, their strength increases exponentially, as does their ability to succeed. Frida is waiting for them. And for the first time, there is hope. 
maybe even a little trust in their eyes. North Node Spencer leads them on to number 10 Aquarius Heights. The view is excellent. What new insight has been revealed? There might be a way to continue living. Summing up, this is a new endeavor for our group, a work in progress to be sure. A time span of approximately six months has been suggested to hone our skills and to develop the format and invite others to participate. Although already we see there is not just one format, nor do we want there to be one. Each participant has her own style of composition. Each script was birthed in a different way. Each astrodrama has its particular value and no one template is held up as the gold standard, although any form may be used as a guideline. Participants are not expected to force themselves to reveal anything which may lead to major discomfort. Some scripts were more revealing than others. It's a choice. Personally, through the use of humor, I was able to share parts of my skip step story, which were particularly dark. Haven't comedians done that forever? I remember a very funny skilled woman with a crippling disease who revealed the difficulty of her life on stage. She found release for herself by making people laugh. I hope that continued to work for her. Script number one, Butter in Her Mouth, is a true story with the actual words being used. This play was composed by the author on her own. I don't know how long the creation took her, probably one swell foop or fell swoop. Script two, Finding Time was created by the cast in a spontaneous ad lib off the cuff way during an online session. Later, the words were transcribed into this play by another member who types really, really fast. Script three, getting it right this time, was written from scratch and was not ad lib. The process took over a week as I jotted ideas down, watched TV, looked up names for my characters according to their sign on the internet, ate, type up, typed up a rough draft, played with the cat, poked and prodded at my writing until I got a gentle email saying, how's it going? I had to be careful not to belabor the process or I would have quit. I've heard there are people who produce better under pressure, and any of you might be in that category, not me. I get scared easily, and I only have one skip step. Some people have multiple skip steps. There were reports of feeling overwhelmed by the complicated nature of the chart. How to make a simple, coherent story. One member, with multiple skip steps, chose to bring her dilemma to the group. It was noted that the process for her began with focusing on one issue, one of the skip step planets squaring the nodes. As brainstorming went on, different voices, different planets were pulled in. This method gave another member a strategy to take home. She knows that the group will be there for support. Thank you for listening and watching.